started this account earlier when we were talking about, I'm like, I got to figure out, and I've already used StreamYard. Oh, cool. Being on other friends' podcasts, and, they, and this, I'm pretty familiar with it, and uh, it seems pretty user-friendly. But this is my first podcast with me ever, so I'm, I'm very oh, glad. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, I, I am this, proud. Friend, I am proud to be on your very first podcast. I have been on people's first podcast. I've been pe- on. I've been on more people's last podcast, which <laughs> I think is hilarious. To where, uh, when I used to do it with Patricia, sometimes I remember like like people that wanted to go out with a bang, or people who were like going to quit a network. They would be like, "Oh yeah, you know what I'm going to do my last show, Flat Earth," and then they flip people off on the way out. It's like, screw you. We, there's even oh, interviews man. that I couldn't post because they, you know, again, they, they, they left, you know, doing flat earth. It's like, that's my last one I'm going to do and not because I believe it or not because it's edgy, but it's because it's so ridiculous and I don't care anymore. Whatever. Right. Right. So, anyway, happy to be here. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm flat man X of flat earth university. Uh, first classman here we have here today, Mr. Mark Sargent himself. Of Flat Earth Clues, 2015 to 2000, what was it, 19? The 20th made the last one? Oh, uh, no, no. The last one I think was made uh, before the documentary. So that would have been 2017. 2017. So, right. yeah. But but since then, I've made, a, I mean, there's f- how many? 1,400 videos on my channel. So wow. yeah, I've, I've done a lot of stuff, but <laughs> the clues, there's only so many I could do. And then, I mean, Hundreds of interviews, hundreds of Q and A. I mean, Strange World. I've done three hundred as of last night. Three hundred forty-three Strange Worlds. Who would have thought? And that's a weekly show. That's what draws yeah. me. It's like it's like three hundred forty-three weeks of Strange World. <laughs> oh. Hey man, more power to you, man. Thanks. More power to you. Thanks. If it wasn't for Strange World, because sometimes Globusters take some time off as well, Jared. So if I didn't have y'all to get me through my weekly work. <laughs> yeah. I, well, it's it's easier to do when you do a week. And Karen's always been good. You know, Karen's been with me for a while. Um, and I did my solo thing for a while. And then I had Jonathan in the beginning. Um, but I, I'm – it's Strange World is – it's fun to do because it's like a heartbeat for me where, you know, now, especially over the last couple of years because the last two years have been a whole different animal. Uh, in fact, I, I'm sad. I'm sad for the community in that there are a bunch of things I cannot put on my YouTube channel because we're not allowed to talk about them. So it's like, all right. I mean, but I'm not going away. Let's put it that way. They'll, you know, what, what, what's the old Charlton Heston line from my cold dead hands? Yeah, so, <laughs> don't have to drag me away. I'm, I'm hope. I'm my only, my own. Yeah. I'm anyway. Go ahead. Excellent. All right. Um, obviously, us being a university. We're not really teaching kindergartens over here. So if you haven't figured out it's flat, it's flat yet, it's probably going to be a little overwhelming for most of our uh, future viewers and watchers. So question number one, sir. Okay. Is the Mark Sargent challenge still in effect? Meaning, are you still willing to put on a NASA-proof spacesuit, get inside of a ridiculously dangerous vacuum chamber, and put it to the test? <sighs> <laughs> yeah yeah it is and thank you for bringing up that challenge because i haven't uh I, didn't I haven't yeah i haven't talked about it on strange world because i put it out there and i got no bites at all yeah. so the the old challenge was and the, it stemmed from people in interviews kept asking me what it would take for me to give up flat earth what would prove to me that it was a globe and make me quit and I said, and I initially started with the space footage one, which was, you know, you put a camera on the side of a rocket, the top of a rocket, and make that thing leave orbit and point it back down at the Earth. And eventually the Earth would form into a nice pretty globe. And that's what you would see on the way out. And it's never happened in the history of space travel, which statistically is impossible. That's the one I usually suggested. And people said, well, that's too expensive. You're never going to get approval and blah, blah, blah. And, and they're right. They're absolutely right. And so and I asked a scientist, you know, um, we were debating on some show. I think it was on uh, David Weiss was on it with me. And during the commercial, um, I think I said, he's like, I go, he, he suggested, he goes, you got to come up with something that's on the ground. You know, because I because we were kind of going back and forth because I was ask, asking scientists, what could I do on the ground? You know, is there any proof that science can prove it's a globe without going into orbit? And they said no. And then I turn that into, okay, maybe, maybe I can come up with something that we could do on the ground that could prove flat earth. And so 
I was kind of in the same position he was because if you're obviously if you're not if you're not way up above, how can you really see what the Earth looks like? And I said, yeah, but the closest thing has got to be the the spacesuit because the spacesuit doesn't make any damn sense because it defies thermodynamics, meaning right. pressure cannot exist to no pressure without some sort of barrier, and that barrier has to be um, solid, you know, like a plastic or a metal or something like that, uh, because um, otherwise it's going to expand. Anything soft, and you can look this up on YouTube. You put anything soft that's pressurized into a vacuum chamber, it just expands and expands and blows up. So, but the spacesuit doesn't do that because, well, it's, you know, it's, it's Hollywood. Things that happen in Hollywood, which don't happen in real life. And so I, my challenge was, can, you know, if, if you loaned me any spacesuit from any era, you know, from the 1960s all the way up till now, and put me, you don't have to send me to space. Because people kept asking, it's like, oh, could, what if we sent you to space? I'm like, nah. I go, you don't have to. I go, put me in a university vacuum chamber, because there are some big ones out there. And it doesn't have to be a military base. It can be a university. Put me in a vacuum chamber with this spacesuit, and crank that baby up, and tell me how I survive. How that suit defeats the, the, the pressure difference of a vacuum chamber, and tell me how it doesn't turn into a parade float, and I burst and I die. And I'm and, and people think, oh, you wouldn't do that. I absolutely would do that. Are you kidding? I'm one of those martyr types. I my I'm older, so me dying for a cause, that's a good death. It really is. And people say, oh, you you chicken out. It's like, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, because well, because I never got married, never had kids. Yeah, a lot yeah. easier. If you don't have that, there's a lot of pressure that isn't there anymore. No plan. Just yet. know now that you know people like me, if that did ever happen. I will be there for that. Oh, and I'll be at the ejector good. button. As soon as I see you start suffocating, bow. I slap <laughs> it. Then I slap the crap out of the NASA scientist. He told you you wasn't listening. And then you almost killed my man, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in fairness, though, I did my rider to that, which I really wanted to happen, but I was willing to do it solo, was that, you know, you really should get someone from science. Like, put your money where your mouth is. You had a scientist standing there with me. And it's like, they're going to pull the switch. What do you think is going to happen? And and the scientists should be really, really nervous because, again, the spacesuit doesn't make any damn sense. In fact, there's a wonderful, um, not you know, when you look up people in a vacuum chamber on YouTube, usually the first one is James May from Top Gear, uh, the British uh, car show. But one of the other ones, which I found recently, which was, which was um, very interesting, was one of the guys from Mythbusters. Mythbusters went in the very same chamber that James May from Top Gear did at that Air Force base. You know, it's, it, the thing's the size of a small closet, and it's a G-Force suit, right? Where it's just a tube connected to, you know, it's, it's a G-Force suit is part of the plane. It's a pressurized system. It's a pressurized suit, but you're not, it's not a backpack. It's connected to the plane. And they have you sitting, and they crank up the suit, and you go rigid. I mean, you are freaking frozen in that position. Because you're sitting down, and and that's how the suit is is designed. And people that are in that suit, everyone's really unhappy about being in that in that test. It's really weird. It's very very uncomfortable for them. And so, but that's what you you never ever see the astronauts in that's a spacesuit. Right. You always yeah, you know this. You always see them in swimming pools, and you never see them in a, in a perfect um, right. vacuum environment. And even when you do, you don't believe it because they're just walking around. It's like. It, technically, you could say this is a vacuum that I'm in right now. I was like, how are you going to know? Because a vacuum is invisible. The, the human eye can't see it. So anyway, right. sorry, I ramble. No, you're good. You're good. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, the next one, I want to read back up the, the Clue 14. Yeah. If you don't have any ideas or if you do, my just suggestion is one that you already know about. We would really like the, the community in general. We'd really like to see um, Clue 14 as the moon temperature reading. Uh, with the with the little laser temperature gun pointing inside the moon shadow and inside the moon lights for the degree difference. You know what? That is good. And and I know I no one is you didn't suggest that to me in an email, did you? I did. <laughs> did you crap? Sorry. Okay. Um, man. Well, no, no, that's good. For a clue 14, uh for a for a flatter clue, actually that, that would actually be pretty good. People have said, you know, well, why didn't you do a whole bunch of more clues after you did the original clues? It's funny when I did them, because I start I tried to tack on a few clues, but the one the the first original run, uh, which people in the industry like to call lightning in a bottle, 
when it resonates with some, the the when things resonate with people, <clears throat> you try to do things. You know, you try to do, tack on or keep going and do some sort of encore. But most of the time, people are like, "No, no, this is what it is." You know, I I put I made even the director's cut where I tacked tacked stuff on. People changed it. You know, people the original Flat Earth Clues two hour thing wasn't created by me. It was created by the people out there that took all the clues and stitched them together because my channel wasn't old enough or big enough to even allow that to be put on the channel. I can only make 15 minute videos back in the day. And people all, and what was happening was I was getting all these emails from people saying, wow, I really enjoyed your movie. And I, I thought they were just grammatically challenged. I had no idea what they were saying. And so finally somebody said, wow, dude, I really enjoyed your two hour movie. And then I said, what two hour thing did you watch? I go, send me a link to that. Right. And then I realized that it wasn't just one person. It was multiple people, different people that didn't even know each other that created, as you know, um, they are hiding God with the greatest lie ever. They are hiding God with the biggest lie ever under yeah. the dome, full documentary. I mean, these people that didn't even know me and they would had stitched them all in order, you know, clue one, clue two, they, you know, they didn't at least swap them out, which was nice. And they put them out there and they were generating millions of hits. And, and it's like, oh, that's the reason. Because I was, I mean, I was getting some hits, but I wasn't getting that many hits. And that's, again, that's what generated, I mean, heck, uh, uh, like um, D Marble, a great example. He never even watched the original clues. He watched Under the Dome full documentary. So it was really cool the the way the way it it kind of yeah. transpired. So, but but anyway, the the point was is that the original clues, but when they started hitting, I believe in everything for a reason. Uh, after that, I was doing, um, I was just doing more. I was I was talking to more people about flat Earth than I was anything else. I mean, I was it was all all I could do to keep up with the interviews, and to keep up with this, and because people just kept, I mean, I was getting barraged by emails asking about the original stuff and so and and people were coming up with their own thing i'll give you some perfect examples like people were coming up with better clues than me without calling them clues right meaning the um remember the original and i didn't talk about this in the clues thank goodness um my original map that i love was the orlando ferguson roulette table map Love that thing. I mean, it was from the 1830s. Very, very cool. Had that roulette table look. And people, for two things. One, as you know, people said, you can't use roulette table because all the numbers on a roulette table add up to 666. Absolutely true and super weird. And the second thing was, is that people started running to the beach on their own and shooting yeah. long distance photography. And they were calling me and said, no, no, dude, just ditch that map entirely. It's absolutely flat. I'm going, how do you know? And they, they, cause we're shooting water. We're shooting water. I go, why are you shooting water? And remember the clues never said anything about water being level. And so people were creating, again, I, I'm glad in some ways that they didn't because it would have muddied the waters, but people right. were creating better clues and more of them on a monthly basis than I ever could have come up with. And so, and, and people just right out doing, I mean, the, the, the moon temperature experiment, not me. Uh, right. Vacuum versus gravity, not me. Um, the longest photography, not me. In fact, my five bullet points that I bring up to people, which I talked about in an interview just before this, um, uh, th those five points had nothing to do with me. The Van Allen radiation belts, not me. Um, the moon, the the moon shadow, also not me. In fact, I'll even give credit the um, the long distance flights, the long haul flights, was initially sent to me in an email by a british guy and now he didn't have any details he's going he goes here's something you really should start looking at you know figure this out and that's when i started looking at the long haul flights and uh, in fact i didn't even know what the long term long haul was and the, but but then i started kind of finagling stuff around so so yes i i'd i would have loved to have made 100 clues but the speed that people were making their own was just right. passing me by which was, and again, I can't take too much credit for it because, you know, there's a lot of great people making great stuff. But I will say this, I, you know, when <laughs> subliminally, when I said do your own research and ask questions, no idea that people were just going to be like, yes, I must do. Part of it, sorry, <laughs> one, one last thing. Part of it was probably because they, I kept hearing, the most common thing I was hearing from people was they were listening to me while they were sleeping. And that creeped me out a little bit because it's like, really? 
that, that you put me on while you're sleeping. But again, if I'm in your head, you know, even Chris Geo, that the the guy that runs TFR, yeah. he's, he's like, oh, dude, I because I still sometimes put you on when I try to want to go to sleep because I just listen to your voice yeah. in the background at low levels. And then so if I'm doing do your own research and ask questions <laughs> while we're sleeping, yeah, people are, uh, like in, in hindsight, it's like <laughs> give you me your credit card. card. Give me your credit card and your expiration date <laughs> and the three digit code on the back. Three digit code on the back. <laughs> I swear, Mark, if I look on my bank today, <laughs> I remember fitting something to that little island up there. <laughs> awesome, bro. All right, I got another one for you. Oh, this one's a little out there. I don't think I've ever heard anybody ask you this, although I'm sure you've at least commented on it, and I know you got an opinion on it. What? And, uh, it's almost a two for but let me split it up. Where are your thoughts about all the old giant trees? It's like the one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was living in um, um, Victoria, Canada when when that came across. I was in, I lived in Canada for a year. You know, met a girl, wonderful girl at a flat earth meetup in Seattle. Way too young for me. Way too young. And she's like, why don't you come up and live with me in Canada and make videos oh, and stuff? Nice. I'm going, okay. <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. Seriously. She was, yeah, it's like she was 29 and I was not, not 20, 29. Not 29. <laughs> and and I remember when that video came out made by I was it a Russian guy? Definitely Eastern Bloc. Um, and because his accent was was pretty thick. And I loved it because again, it was thinking way outside the box. You know, there are it was initially titled There Are No Trees on Flat Earth. And mm -hmm. It was, and he tied it into flat earth, but he basically was saying, and I love the concept, which was back in the things like, like what we do now, we, when we build something new, it's usually big. And then we shrink it down and shrink it down and shrink it down and shrink it down. I mean, come on, the old stereos were huge. And now, you know, I'm listening to music on a treadmill from an eye, yeah. you know, a yeah. thumbnail drive. That's that big. It's ridiculous. And that would make sense in terraforming too. So you remember, you know, it, whether or not you believe in dinosaurs, whatever they were talking about was really, really huge. And so if the dinosaurs were big, maybe they weren't just really, really big. Maybe everything was big, right. meaning, meaning the trees and, and all the vegetation that was tied along with it. So, yeah, I know I, I dug it. I, I thought it was really, really cool. And as you would shrink things down, you would erase as much as possible. I have been always fond of calling this place a sandbox world, which is the, the whoever's running this, I think also learns over time. Now I'm not insulting God or anything. I right. think there, I think there are other things, you know, lieutenants that are probably running this world. Uh, you know, like but, but I, but I no, I love it. I, I love the no trees on flat earth. I think it's really, really cool. Scientists just think it's ridiculous, but it generated a whole bunch of interest, huge amounts of interest. And, uh, and, and again, it's, it, we, we inspired people to bring up topics and throw them out into social media that never would have seen the light of day 20 years ago, never would have seen it. People just laughed it off. And now we've opened minds up to where people can bring up just about anything. It's like, again, you've heard me say this before, whereas flat earth has forced me to reconsider theories that even I would have laughed at. You know, with, with the, the, the one that I'm fond of saying, which is somebody, if somebody would have come up to me 10 years ago and said, oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that Elvis had Bigfoot's baby. Right. And I'd be like, get out of here. Now I'd be like, yeah, you know what? I'll give you a few minutes. What do you got? <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Hit me. Now, yeah. I may still may hate it at the end, but I'm giving this guy time now. Serious. Time. And, and hadn't I done that, hadn't I done that, the temperature test would have never been even considered. Because the first time somebody called me up on the show on a Strange World episode when Jonathan was still there and said, oh, yeah, by the way, it's the moon's generating a cold light. I mean, I almost laughed him out of the room. I almost hung up on him. It's like, what are you talking about? Moon generating a cold light? Are you drunk? Click. No. No. It's like, all right. All right. What? 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 Tell me more. So. Yeah. I, when you, the same night you put that out there on the internet, I was like, I said the same thing. Bullshit. I yeah. still have my temperature gun that I've never used before since then. And, I was, <laughs> and then that same night, it was a partially full. It was enough to get the reading, no clouds. Yeah. And uh, I sure enough, it was only like a, a several degree difference, but I did it. And I did it on the street. I did it in the grass. I pulled out some water. I did on several things and it kept consistently yep. being 
cooler. Did you, did you ever see the one that was done a couple of years ago where um, a non flat earther broke out his predator vision camera? Oh, no. You haven't seen that? That's on my channel where he broke it. I mean, full blown predator vision thermal camera. And he's going, all right, let's shut down all this flat earth crap right now. And he starts shooting his neighborhood, you know, in a moonlit night. He's like, what is happening? <laughs> At the end, he's like, well, he goes, it may not prove flat earth, but it shows me something. So that's yeah, very, very oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, right. Check yeah, that out if you get a chance. Oh, yeah. It's on your channel, you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's under uh, tests and observations. You can't miss it. I mean, the thumbnail is might as well be a scene out of Predator. Oh, I'm definitely going to make a little trailer out of that one. That's yeah. awesome. Awesome. All right. Oh, the, the second part of that question actually had to do with <clears throat> maybe why the trees were cut down in the first place. Oh, but, oh, the, because if, if you're terraforming, oh, let's pretend you're a sandbox god. Right. Let's say you're running this place and again, not insulting God in any way, shape or form, <laughs> but let's say you're a sandbox God. Um, you are, you can't leave some of the old stuff. If you're shrinking down, it's almost it, the, the old stuff is obsolete. So leaving the giant, super giant trees, not going to help you in any way, shape or form. You got to shrink things down to, to give perspective. Otherwise people are, I don't even know it'd be confusing. It's just not going to match the the artistic vision uh, because then you got really really tiny things and giant trees that they're never ever going to scale because they're so high that they wouldn't even be able to make it to the top because of altitude sickness and mountains would become meaningless because i mean how people are even gonna get i mean we we need oxygen tanks to get to mountains right now and some of these trees right. would have been taller than than everest right so, correct yeah, and compl I and completely vertical which would have made it way tougher possible almost I agree. Yeah. Would you say that some of these uh, would be in a Tartarian civilization, something advanced? <sighs> That's such a tough one for me. People have brought up Tartaria to me for the last two or three years, uh, along with the mud flood thing. Yeah. Um, oh, do I hard. believe in the mud flood thing? Sure. Uh, I'm not going to discount it because there is, there's some weird stuff out there. And yeah. when it comes yeah. to Tartaria, it, you, because you're it's two different things but they are related which is tartaria as you've heard me say i am fond of older civilizations that are that predate us when you have a civilization that's older than us um you have to wipe most of the slate clean before you bring in a new civilization but tartaria is different because some of the structure the the concept there still around yeah the concept there is you can leave some of the structures and bring in the new civilization anyway you're saying well that probably shouldn't happen or wouldn't happen it's like well think about it this way there are some structures that are always left no matter what um the egyptian pyramids which i had the the privilege of, of seeing at least once before the borders started getting all weird um i went out to see the the egyptian pyramids specifically because i had heard that it said look when you stand in front of them and you look at them in context and you look at cairo behind you you realize what you're looking at because when you that's, that's the truth you go there and you look at the pyramids and you look at any of the engineering things around it and you turn around and look at cairo and the state that's in you realize like you know these people had nothing to do with this right, right. <laughs> at all so i think for me i think it's kind of a fun little thing now tartaria is weird because it's more than I, I think it's it's a mystery that's being put in front of well, like right in front of our face. The pyramids are just being claimed by us before reading and writing. So again, for me, if you guys don't know what the pyramids mean to me, they are an older civilization's structures when the older station lift left and then our modern pharaohs by any stance came in, they just looked around, no one was there, and they're like yeah, so we're going to take credit for this <laughs> and we're going to, and again, power perceived. All you had to do was say, oh yeah, we built this. And every slave that comes in within a generation is like, wow, look what they built. You know, they're, they're incredible, even though they had nothing to do with it. Do you so, think this is why we have so many inconsistency in the stories of, uh, historically speaking of the official stories, how, oh, 10 years, 30 years. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, history is, history is I mean, we, we all know the saints. History is written by the winners or history is just lies that are agreed upon. But people don't, 
people accept what is presented to them. They don't, people don't immediately, unless you are brought up in a rough, rough neighborhood <laughs> where people lie to you all the time and you have to learn, you know, you're street savvy. Um, people believe, you know, again, especially kids, if you, if you're told, look, it kind of like the Truman show, we believe the world is presented to us and history. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't think, I think most of history is probably screwed up in a lie and the dating system. Well, come on. If the dating system's wrong, the carbon dating system is absolutely wrong, but science is trying to keep its foundation going and they're trying to create stability by just putting their stamp on it and hoping people won't notice and oh, then people yeah. just go along. And yeah. for the most part, it works because the average person, come on, when they get out of school, they don't remember much from school. They don't remember much about engineering if they're taught it at all or physics, or biology or microbiology, especially now or any of that crap. So they, they just want to, you know, it's like, can I drive a car? Can I get to work? I just want to, you know, can I sit in the weekends and, and enjoy some sort of entertainment? Yes. Then that's all they care about. So they, and for the most part, they, they get away with it, which is great. And let me throw one more thing in there, which is scientists are notorious for not checking the original foundation of their info, which is why Tesla gave that warning years and years ago where he said, look, he goes, scientists just build on the shoulders of every scientist without looking at the ground floor. Right. He goes, if no one checks the ground floor, by the time you get up to a certain level, the theories are meaningless because no one's bothered to check anybody else's work because that's not how it should go. You should always reinvestigate where it started, which is why when people say, oh, you're smarter than Einstein or Stephen Hawking, it's like, no, no, they were very smart, you know, uh, math heavy guys. But if the foundation was wrong, then their work was wrong. Yeah, again, they did well with the theory that was presented to them, but not much I can do. Right. So this is a nice segue into, this is a term that I've heard you use often, about flat earth being the framework of things to come. And now being in 2022, I feel like that frame has been completely constructed. It's sitting up there and there's a picture that's starting to form. What yeah. do you see? I, I absolutely agree with you. And I was just talking about that um, a little while ago where, um, uh, yeah, it's slow. The canvas is being unfurled. The flat Earth appears to be, for better or for worse, and yes, we probably did the work for them, the framework, the open-minded framework for a canvas that only now we're, we're starting to see. And you're saying, why? And it's like, what are you talking about? It's like, well, because we were promoted just shamelessly for three years straight, just shameless i mean they were they couldn't have helped us anymore to the point where even the government was like had to take their foot off the gas it's like oh we better we've saturated the market every when you go on youtube every major channel has done a flat earth video every one of them has done a flat earth video and they did it because they saw the metrics and they saw it was going through the roof um what but yes after a certain point we saturated the market to where everybody know everybody's watched the netflix thing everybody's they've all seen it and everyone's got an opinion on it now i mean yes we are picking up more and more people which is great i mean the flat earth friend finder a great example of that um but now in the last two years and and <laughs> I, again i've got to give give props to david weiss on this one when 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 he called me up and he, you know, a couple of years ago, when this thing, you know, the last couple of years started rolling, he's going, so are we partially responsible for what's happening here? You know, did, did they just find is the, is the great reset partially due to us, to the flat earth thing, opening up as many minds as, and it's like, I'm, I'm not going to shoot it down right. because, because, because why not? Um, and yeah, if you're talking about the, the great set or great reset or the great next phase of our civilization, or maybe the end, you know, our, our big wind down, our big act three song and dance number that certainly sees what it's, what's kind of playing into. I mean, if you listen to the show um, from last night, or at least you know what it was called phase two um, or stage two, which is, you know, for the last two years, we've been, it, it, we've been kind of, I don't know, I'm not going to get into this too much, but we've kind of been set up. And now I called it to where now we seem to be moving into the next, the, the next stage. And point being, let's circle back, is flat earth, does it have something to do with it? Yes. Uh, would some people say that's delusional? 
Oh, yeah. Some people would say that's delusional. Sure. But at the same time, some people also said that um, it was delusional that they ripped down the YouTube scoreboard because of us. Right. And then right. and it's like, well, I, I, that just doesn't happen. It's like, really? Because they removed thumbs down just a couple months ago yeah. to where <laughs> when, when did you ever think that was going to happen to where you cannot thumbs down a video anymore? Right. Because, of, again, it does not take that many people. Don't forget that the whole reason why uh, very few people can make a difference. The whole reason why we were being recommended so much in YouTube, recommended for you, no matter what topic you typed in, recommended for you, Flat Earth, was because of one guy, one European programmer. He wrote that in there. He basically said, if there's a binge watch topic starting to form to where people start ranking numbers of videos in a row and what he figured out was he said if whatever topic is being clicked on in a row over and over and over and over and over again whatever scores the highest there we're going to recommend all the time we're just going to do this rationing scale and mm. why that great line when he says when he goes you want to know why things are recommended the way you know the way they are he goes well the average person can out of thousands of topics he could have brought up he, he brings up one topic and he says out of all the topics, he goes, if the average person that first gets into Flat Earth watches 20 videos in a row, and that's a lot, 20 videos in a row, he goes, what do you think we're going to recommend? And that's what happens. So, yeah, we we were we were unstoppable to, to the point where they had to slow us down. Yeah. They, you know, when you when the government comes out and says, yeah, yeah, YouTube, you got to recommend them. You better reset us by 2020 at this rate, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To where, yeah, you, you, you're right. We, the, the, the timing, yeah, here we are at 22. And now, yeah, now you can start to see. Ranting right back up again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't know if they'll be able to stop it. Oh, which, that's funny. This leads into the next segue. Yeah. Would possibly, since... <clears throat> I forgot who, uh, which lady it was and who they were talking to. I think it was Barna Barbara's assistant when they were going over the different things that are basically phases to bring up the population of the world to before the climax would, would be the alien invasion. Right. Or at least the perceived alien invasion. Oh, perceived yeah. Alien. Because you can fake it now. You We have the tech. We can fake an alien invasion and people will buy it. However... It's got to be perfect. Whatever you're going to do, it can't be just a song and dance um, stage production with CGI stuff because we are the, the, the media hungry masses out there are so hyper aware of picking apart things that they will find the flaws. So whatever you do, it better be bulletproof. May I, add that I think the SpaceX uh, rocket landing. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. I, I don't think that was exactly as what it, we perceived to be. No, 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 no. And and by the way, that's, I mean, they steal from movies all the time. There was a movie right. um, some years ago um, with Thomas Jane called um, uh, Battle Los Angeles, where the right. alien technology wasn't anti-grav. It was pulse detonation rocket engines. And it looked really weird and kind of cool, you know, where these engines were firing off big bursts of, of thrust in, in like a strobe light fashion. But you could tell it was very mechanical in nature. And that's what was keeping them, you know, kind of floaty, you know, kind of, you know, they were constantly adjusting. It was like a hover jet, but, but, but using rockets instead of jets. It was so freaky. But when I was watching the the SpaceX stuff land, that's what I was seeing. I was going, you know, I was all of a sudden I hear this, you know, and I'm going, really? Pulse detonation engines you're using for, for these rockets and the military is using nothing along those lines at all, but you're using them perfectly for rockets. No, 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 no. I mean, come on, this is, uh, the, the SpaceX thing, I will say this, at least it was better than the, um, the Tesla in space, you yeah. know, the Roadster, the convertible oh, yeah. in space, that was horrible. Yeah. That yeah. was damn horrible. Um, and yeah, then- That didn't seem like it last too long. Like, they don't even like talking or referring no. to- No, and again, you know, other people, I, I think it was actually Patricia, the, the one that mentioned that, um, she goes, why wouldn't that Roadster in space be in a big banner on every dealership in Tesla? It's like, right. 
Yeah, you know what? You're absolutely right. It would be. In fact, why wouldn't you run that as a actual car commercial right. all the time? You're the first and only person to you know group to ever put a car in space. Yeah. Why wouldn't you run that? And they they never ever did. In fact, but then again, I picked that apart earlier. It's like no. The bigger question is why weren't there any logos on the damn thing? Right. Oh, or the know. Disney characters. That was a good one too. That's Lynn Roaster. So anyway, um, number six. Um, with the new wave that's been coming out with all these new flat earthers, is there any particular shows or people that that you're kind of proud of or that you would keep me an eye on? Um. Yeah. I just put, in fact, I'm going to be uploading it after this is over, the um, Flatten the Curve documentary that was done by, oh, what's his name? It is, if I can find it. Yeah, crap. Where is it? Video recommend. Crap, crap, crap. Can't find it off, off the top of my head. But it is Flatten the Curve by Vika Drazev. D R A Z I V. That's that's he made a, a, a the great compilation video, which I thought was awesome. Um, other people that that aren't as new, but like um, um, Jay Tolan Media. Oh yeah, I, mean, I, mean, oh, I think he does. I think he is so underrated yeah. in in that his footage. He was he st again. He stumbled across something that was just mind blowing, which is, Oh yeah, by the way, I can put a daytime nano filter on my camera and I fly then I just stick it out the window and I can see stuff. And he kind of draws you in with that whole, you know, the, the drawn out accent. Mm -hmm. Isn't yeah. it incredible? <laughs> That's incredible. And no, I mean, I'm hypnotized when I watch it. It's yeah. again, part of it's just watching the long distance photography. And then he just keeps you going because it's, his speech is just so very unique. Very oh, unique. It's, it's, I would love to know what country he's from originally. For sure. Uh, next one. Where do you see a flat earth in another five years from now with the way things are going at the moment? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, it's tough because I can't even, if, if I'm going, and again, I'm not going to give away too much here because of the, the content uh, type, which is I see the next stage that we're in going for another two years which is basically just distractions um because everything they wanted to do everybody that they wanted to affect they did yeah. and now it's just a question of distracting everybody between now and whenever so the the next couple of years you're going to see russia and ukraine and probably china and taiwan and maybe some other things in in the background now now flat earth if everything gets pulled back restriction wise, you're going to see more conferences. I mean, I've already seen a huge uptick in meetups, which is awesome. Yes, um, if they, if the airlines pull back, even in the slightest, um, we'll see a lot more domestic stuff. I don't know. The international stuff's going to be tricky right. because the United States is pulling back way faster than other countries. Uh, you know, like in 2019, before this whole thing started up, I mean, again, I did conferences in seven countries, which was awesome. And I got to do fun things, you know, you know, do the commercial in, in um, Australia and then do TV things over in London, plus stuff like that. Now, if, if they start loosening restrictions, yeah, great. We'll, we'll be back out there, but I don't know if they're going to, I don't know. I'll be as honest as I can here. I don't know if they're going to let us. They're not going to make it easy for us again because, like you said, if they take if they take off the shackles again, we've already got way more numbers than we had before. Oh yeah! So people would be like, "Yeah, let's do this!" And you know the 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 great Vegas conference that was supposed to happen in 2020, which didn't because well we couldn't find anything that that wasn't going to completely restrict us. Um, if that happens, that'd be a great starting point. Um, as far as the other stuff, I don't know. I mean, you're going to start seeing, I've started to see um, flatter stuff on smaller social media things, which drive me nuts. I mean, TikTok, how much can you do in freaking 60 seconds? You know, uh, it, no, you get, you get three minutes. That's IG, you get 60 seconds. Oh, okay. TikTok, get three minutes. That's where I started. That's why I put some of your first clues that was on there, but yeah, it's hard crunching your already condensed version down even further. Plus, you have, I mean, the, the attention span of people is so limited anyway. But but with our topic, you want to dig in more, which is nice. I mean, YouTube is still a big mainstay for us. And come on, 
I lucked out where, and I don't know this is one of your questions, but I'm going to bring it up anyway, which is, look, my channel should be dead. My channel should have been wiped right. out. I mean, yes, I'm, I, I'm on all the other things, not because of me, because other people have put them on other things. But my YouTube channel should have been dead. I got 11 guideline strikes in 72 hours. And there's no way I should have survived that. No. However, either the rule changed or and that's me being nice or somebody has been granting me mercy at a higher level. I Sometimes I think there's a big nerd Illuminati group that toys with me on a regular basis. But see, I, I, I don't mind. Going, but well, like I, how you, I see where you're going with that. But like how you suggested before, um, they were helping us. I, yeah. I think more than you two yes. um just like how you kind of put pieces together from the russian guy the the uh, who gave you the hint the very first one yeah and the british guy who gave you the long haul yeah i feel like somewhere some organization somewhere like yeah we got to put this out we're going to move forward with our plan we yeah. can't have them continue to believe they're spinning on a ball we need them over here if we're yeah. going to move forward and I feel like, but we're not going to, and they were like, that nah, in the meeting, they're like, they're not going to listen to us. We've been telling them the other way the whole time. Yeah. So how are we going to do this? Well, let's leak it out. Let them think they figured it out by themselves. And so absolutely. Next yep. 20 years, when everybody's on that side, will adopt the new uh, way of thinking and be like, oh, no, we've always thought this. We've oh. always known. We had to do that for this reason. We had to lie for the... Apollo missions because of Russia. We had a life to you know, your grandparents about this because of these people. And, and then yeah. they'll just adopt it and then they'll go for it. They'll put their stamp on it. And then here we are. The new I don't, I, it's, they could drag it out 20 years. I hope they don't. It would, that would be sad. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but at the same time, they slow, I mean, look what they did in the last two years. They slowed things way down, but they almost broke it. They slowed things down so far, meaning they almost broke. Not us, but broke everything. 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 People were starting to people were starting to freaking lose. I mean, you when Canada starts doing what they were doing, you know it's like I lived there for a year. These are not people that 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 lose their crap easily. Right. You know, they they took, you know, if you if you push these guys that far, then you're probably at that stage where it's like, okay, no, whatever, let's move on to whatever the next part of your plan is. So anyway, five years we'll we'll see. Um, I would expect huge things in five years. Huge. Yeah, I think. For, I think this next stage, stage two, twenty-two, all of twenty-two and all of twenty-three, is going to be just a, a freaking roller coaster ride compared to the crap we dealt with before. Because the last two years for me has gone by. Even though it slowed things way way down for me, it went by in a heartbeat because I was just locked into a routine that uh you know it's like all right this is what i'm doing everywhere i mean weeks have blown by here on the island where it's like what happened i have no idea what i did because i'm doing the same things every week and i and i have not traveled since uh flattober fest 2019. Oof. yeah you've been stuck there for a while brother yeah. no wait 2020 sorry i went oh, to 2020 did. i went to 2020 didn't go to 21. yeah i know but yeah that was the last one because i i was there with um i stayed in the the place with Zulu and Dottie and, and, and that sort of thing. But I didn't do 21 because again, mostly because the, the airlines were going nuts when they started doing, I was coming back from 20 from, from plateau over 20 and they were doing temperature checks on some flights that were going into Canada. You know, when they were doing the temperature guns on people's foreheads, I'm going, what is that about? And what are you doing? If you, if you get a reading, you don't like, you just, right. It's too late. It's too late. Yeah. <laughs> and then packing. What if you have a family of five and what the, one of the little ones gets it, what happens at that point? You not lay him on the plane. Do you wrap them in bubble wrap and just, like, what do you do? <laughs> anyway, what else you got? All right. Uh, just a few more questions. Um, what do you think about somatics? And, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of an incoherent electrostatic acceleration. It's the new, explanation for gravity more or less i when it comes to gravity you know part of my stance which is i you know i, I believe in all right what I, what I try to tell people is whether however you want to explain it whether it's a what'd you call it electro it's a Incoherent electrostatic. Yeah, what it is basically, you know, the ground being the ground, neutral yeah. or negative. 
the sky, our sky, where we have our lightning storms, is actually a positively charged uh, environment, as we know, because we can immediate radio waves and electronic signals that perforate through the ether. This ether is highly charged about every 100 meters or so, I believe yeah. it was. I'm still learning it. Bob from Bob from Globusters and uh, Zach from Good Times for All have been doing excellent experiments. I got to actually uh, play with his grander bath um, generator. Back nice. Back to protest, but we took a, a button suspended by a helium balloon and with a simple leads going to the button and then back to the uh, vent of uh, the electrostatic Van der Graaff machine, you would just spin this cog that would take rubber and brush it along uh, uh, some other rubber that led up to a trapple sphere that, uh, le- that excited the, the electrons around it that sent uh, electrostatic to the button that lowered it to the ground. And, re- and then by when we uh, disengaged or released the static electricity from the machine, the button would rise back up all by simply adding voltage. Really? electricity I that's have a, brilliant like, video on it uh, a few weeks ago yeah i would love to see a video on that that that's that's awesome and that sounds like something bob well and cammy probably the oh, yeah. smart, cammy's oh, one of the such smartest help. people such i've ever met in my life oh, i love them both very much yeah. and i got to hang out with them at and Global. and i love when you get two very intelligent people like that <clears throat> and they have a kid and everything works out and you know the story you know of him where it's like he was what 14 when he yeah. hacked Fortnite, and then and then was smart enough was smart enough to send what he found to Forbes magazine, but then f- not smart enough to leave his screenshot account name cut off or blurred, <laughs> and so Forbes <laughs> magazine just p- paste it as is. So the next thing you know, Bob and Cammy get FedEx from the attorneys from Fortnite, <laughs> saying cease and desist because he wasn't even old enough. To be sent a legal document, <laughs> I, love, I love that. And that again, he, so... he, he, I didn't realize because I got to hang out with the kid um, when I was up in Canada um, at the one of the Canadian conferences, and I knew he was a bit of a, a a tech geek. I had no idea that he was one of those guys that starts fiddling with the URL, and then the next thing you know, he's got things on his screen that shouldn't be there, and it's like what? How are you even doing this? Now, he could have been now eventually, and, and of course, yeah, then Fortnite hired him because, well, that's Probably. what we do. And it was probably <laughs> good because if if not, eventually he's one of those type of kids where you get a little, a, a quick little meeting with, with you know, in an office with people that aren't going to tell you what group they're from. It's like, how would you like to work for your country? <laughs> you know, <type laughs> thing. That's how on the shoulder there. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, three more. Let me see. Oh, are you holding anything back as far as something you want to kind of get off your chest, something that you've been wanting to talk about, but you feel like Strange World isn't ready for it? This is the place. I was born a um, a large Jewish woman. <laughs> oh, that's you do that, Mark. No, 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 no. Uh, no, no. Um, no, I, I generally throw everything out there that i that i can as far as i mean there's some things that i like to push but i don't in our community because it it kind of disrupts from the original concept which is like one being it's like look flat earth is great but as you know i've said many many times if it's flat and it's enclosed it's probably virtual however it doesn't really matter because when you're in it it's not virtual Meaning, you know, if right, look, it's, it's, look, I'm knocking on the desk. It's about as real as it can be, right? But that's only because we're in it. So, and the general population still doesn't get it. Yeah, they play games and we make virtual worlds. I'd, I'd, love, to, I'd love to push that further, but I know I can't because the general public wants a very, very simple narrative. And unfortunately for us, the simple, the simple explanation is, oh, flat earth. But that term is so, it's not even hated. It's just so mocked on a regular basis that people just, they, they don't want to do it. So no, no, I'm not, I'm not really holding anything back. I didn't think so. so. I just think I'd ask you. No, no. Well, or or what, well, you want me to confess to being like after seven years being a government agent, that sort of thing? No, I mean, it's a little late for that now. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, 
Yeah, no, my my grand plan. No, my it's a ten year agent plan. After I'm wow. deep you cover for, in a few years. Then. Well, yeah, <laughs> and then the next to clone mark. <laughs> I think you're what? I'm not that old. I'm gonna retire. It's like, remember 2015? <laughs> yeah, we started this all. <laughs> remember Game of Thrones? <laughs> so, so no black suits, no, no anything weird coming up. Just no, like... no. As a matter of fact, well, that's one of those things where look, it's a blessing and a curse for me. I've always been, for lack of a better term, lucky. I don't know why, just how it has worked out in in a lot of different areas. And but when people see that, especially in the conspiracy world, that's a terrible thing. Conspiracy, conspiracy people don't believe in luck. Conspiracy <laughs> people just like, okay, what you know? I mean, come on, that's one of the reasons why um, Dubay's people have been so merciless around me, and uh, and Matt Boylan was was merciless around me. Um, I have heard, I have, you know, I don't read the comments very often, but I know the people post in there. It's like. What what makes him sketchy is he came out of nowhere and got to do all these things. But I did try to explain it in the documentary, which was one of um, human beings' most common traits is laziness. And media is no different. And so when you start, it's it sounds so simple, but it's true, which is once you start doing interviews, if you are coherent, if you can actually do a good interview – and and come get your points across and you don't ruffle any feathers and you hit the right notes they don't want to look at anybody else they, it's not like you're auditioning for for a role in a movie right. you know where it's like, it's like well he's not quite my artistic vision let's go with chris hemsworth <laughs> you know that sort of thing they, people would immediately look at me and it's like they'll listen to my interviews i mean i've heard this time and time because yeah I listen to you if you're like down oh, 10 minutes you seem fine we'll use you and I've heard that over and over and over again, which is why I kept telling Matt Boylan, uh, dude, you better start doing this because eventually they're not even going to care anymore. And that's exactly what happened. Now, turns out Matt was a complete schizo and he couldn't do a good interview if his life depended. Seriously, if he had a gun pointed at his head, he still couldn't do a good interview. And, and it's amazing to me. Uh, again, he got... But he's he's got such a weird presence that all these producers kept calling me, even after they're doing interviews. You know, I, I can't tell you how many I end up um, people still like even as little as maybe a year ago. People were still asking me about Matt Boylan. It's like, do you know where Matt is now? It's like, uh. <laughs> I was actually friends with I think we're still friends on Facebook. Matt? He, yeah. Is he you know, still in Vegas? Uh, I'm not sure. He moved with, with Katie and the baby. <laughs> Uh, that last time I see, there was a girl there. He has a certain type, so I can't tell which and, one. And by the way, I have to mention this: the the documentary, which the you know, there's certain things that people don't understand the power of editing. They paint you know, the yeah. way they want to paint you, and they left out so many things. Uh, I mean, not just about me, you know, like you know, like I played video games for a living. Left that out, you know, that I was arrested for fireworks stuff by the government. Left that out. You know, just just he's like, no, we want to paint him exactly like this. You know, no one's going to know anything else. And with Matt Boylan, they left out the part. It's like, look, he fled Canada <laughs> because he didn't want to pay taxes anymore up there. And he drove around, literally drove around the United States looking for a wife so he could get citizenship. And it's like, what? <laughs> it's like, how does that work? <clears throat> and he found right. one. And but if you but if you looked in the movie, you know that's you you didn't see that. You know they they wanted to make sure and people and and there was a point you, the you, you watched the movie where he was he he would not he absolutely those those demands that he made were were absolutely real. The part was like oh you know you want guaranteed screen time and this much money and and percent of the gross and he wanted Mark Sargent condemned you know as all this stuff. And it reminded me, I, I know I'm going off on a quick tangent here, but it reminded me of a very old Steve Martin joke when Steve Martin used to do stand-up comedy. And he was talking about bank robbers, how you could get out of it legally. He's going, he's going, you want to, um, he goes, he goes, first, you got to make your list of demands. He goes, million dollars, um, getaway car, and the letter M stricken from the English language, right? It's like, What? He said, you have to make you have to make one of them crazy that way you can get out on insanity right and he laughs and he goes 
getaway car. <laughs> getaway car. <laughs> and, and that's and so when I watched that thing on the screen, I was at the Toronto Film Festival when I saw that when it went to black and it showed that Mark Sarge would be condemned. I'm going, I remember sitting there going, Are you serious? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you got to put that in a movie. And it's absolutely <laughs> real. And they and it, what, you got to remember that they shot that entire thing. They never met Matt. Never met him. <clears throat> they um because they couldn't come to an agreement. So at the end, they just came up with this idea. It's like you know what? He puts all so much content out there. Let's just chop it up. We'll make it look like we interviewed him. <laughs> It'll be fine. And and there was this great sorry this follow up thing which you probably heard which was. I remember he was so angry when he watched the um, the documentary that he um, <laughs> he started calling up lawyers, right? And then he posted that on 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 YouTube where he, he's yelling at the camera. He's going, he goes, "I have called fourteen different lawyers, telling them that these people stole flat Earth from me, and no one will call me back." <laughs> and it's like, dude. You're calling. You're leaving a message at a law office, and you're and you're ranting about how someone stole the flat Earth concept from you. How do they even begin to start with that? How? In fact, I'm sure there are lawyers' offices all over. It's like, oh, oh they're hey, cracking hey, up. Hey, Bob, come here. You gotta listen to this. <laughs> and you know, you know, all fourteen of those guys know each other, and yeah, and they, yeah. there's probably a meme about them. Either. Oh yeah, probably where where they went to lunch or or they didn't. Yeah, yeah they they went to lunch together, and all of a sudden, because they're all in Vegas, and uh, and they were, and it's like it's like, dude, I got this weird phone. It's like you got the same voicemail. <laughs> Like, dude, I went to his I went to his YouTube page. He's nuts. And then they probably saw the Netflix documentary. And it's like, oh my god, oh god, he's he famous. We should have took his case. We should have taken the case. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious, man. Yep. Yeah. He, uh, God bless him. I hope he's doing. I well. mean, hey, look. I mean, I actually talked to Matt a few times. He wasn't that bad a guy, but whoa. no, I would love to hang out with. I would love to hang out with him and you at the same time. <laughs> I uh, well no I mean I I went on it was weird because I I've, I've done phone conversations with him where I just sat the phone down and put it on speaker and I'm just like typing and doing you know the the running gag and, each other. Other. and he's just talking for <laughs> ever I mean there's nothing he's just going on and on and I remember one time he was talking from a, a phone he even recorded it he recorded himself from a different <laughs> phone talking to me and he didn't realize that his his mouth wasn't close enough to the microphone. I couldn't hear half the freaking words. I mean, at all. So I would hear, and then I did, it. and it's like, dude, you're just and read that for like three hours. Not oh kidding. my god, Mark, three hours. Yep, three, three hours. His and and the first time he ever called me, he pretended to be somebody else because he wanted to see if I was real. So he tricked me and said, well. He said that he was from calling from some education association, blah blah blah, and he couldn't even hold that that character very long. It's like he's like, no, I'm just kidding. My this is Matt Boylan. I was like, oh, Matt Boylan, it's really great. <laughs> uh, anyway. uh, that's great, man. Yeah. Right, well, uh, yeah. One, one more. All right, next two more. Okay. Um, have you heard about the the the, the map on the moon? I guess I could. Yeah. That. I have heard about the map on the moon. Uh, I like it. Um, the, for for those listening who don't know what we're talking about here, um, that there is a rough, the black parts of the moon that are facing the world, if you analyze them in a certain way, appear to mimic the continents down here on the world, you know, on, on Earth, if you believe that. Um, but kind of in a flat Earth layout, kind of. But it is it is interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I again, no stone unturned. I, I liked it. I didn't like it as much as no trees on flat earth. Right. But, right, but yeah, right. people have sent me a number of those links and I thought it was kind of cool. I, I do. And and again, I'm not gonna not gonna blow it out in the water because I think there's breadcrumbs left all over the place right. deliberately for us. So if that was a breadcrumb, hey, more power to you. Yeah, there seems to be a whole big uh, amount of people, a whole nother inner Oh yeah, what yeah. Just, again, it, it, bl it. blame us for because again, once you're into underneath the flat Earth umbrella, what right. can't what what can you make fun of? So when people come out and say, "Oh yeah," you know, the only things that I don't really pay attention to anymore are the uh, the doppelgangers, 
So when people say that Jimmy Carter is actually John F. Kennedy, uh, you know, but I knew that from, you know, from Dallas, the, was the, who's the guy, Dallas Goldbug. There was a, a YouTube channel called Dallas Goldbug and every week he would say, this person's this person. And it's like, yeah, I get it. When you shoot a thousand pictures of somebody and then a thousand per- shots of somebody else, eventually, and they're both the same color, you're going to run into some similarities and people that's why the same so many different looks you know certain people have different looks i get it but but yeah, yeah. no i like i like the the moon thing it's kind of fun me too me too i'm glad i'm glad you like it as well yeah. and really the the last thing um if you have any particular advice for us newbies coming up behind you you know blazing a new trail trying to expand uh, our community and information any any professional oh involved. yeah 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 um one uh, as, uh, first off, absorb as much media as you can from within the community, because it, the, half of the emails I get are, are from people saying, hey, have you ever looked at this? And it's like, yeah, there's like a bunch of videos. Here's some links. And, you know, because they, they just, again, the do your own research and ask questions. So first off, make sure you've already, re, you know, you've already looked to see if it's been done yet, whatever you're thinking of doing. And then when you look at it, can you improve on it? But the biggest thing of all for anybody new coming in is don't laugh at anything. Don't shoot down any idea, no matter how silly it is. Now, of course, there's ridiculous trolling ideas where the people are just making fun of, of things. But if it if you're working out in your head and you think you might be onto something, don't let somebody dissuade you Um just because of peer pressure or just because their initial knee-jerk response is that's stupid. Um, if that was the case, we wouldn't even be talking right now. Uh, I found out, I, I reinforced myself because I I worked it out in my, I, I consider myself a fairly clever problem solver and and I, w- I did a lot of tech support for, for really complex software where I had to figure out a lot of stuff on my own anyway. So I couldn't bring it to a lot of people, but working it as a group, it can, can work for you. If you're a newbie and you, and you want, you're bouncing off ideas off of other people, just don't get discouraged when people come at you and say, ah, it's a dumb idea. You shouldn't try that because there's so many things that you wouldn't have thought of if it wasn't for, you know, other people, inspiration inspires and, and it's cyclical. It's just keep the, the ripples keep overlapping in the pond and, Again, the, the clues that I was doing, that there's so many people that don't realize, it's like, look, long distance photography had nothing to do with me at all. Uh, you know, laser experiments, nothing to do with me at all. Uh, I wouldn't have, like, the, the, all the subject matter experts that were calling me up, you know, the people from the military and, and different engineers and um, air traffic controllers, they, it was completely unsolicited. They were just calling me saying, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you, th- you know, think about this, throw this thing in there. So that's, that's the big one, which is whatever's don't let your imagination get curbed by somebody else or even something you read, you know, if you're, if you're, you'll know because it'll resonate with you and you'll think, well, what about this? Again, the, the moon temperature thing, a great one because it, it, I mean, after all these years, no one bothered to check that. Why would you check it? Right, right. Why, exactly. why would you even, why would you double check that? And, and in fact, scientists are blown away from it because no one's, it kind of reminds me of, um, it's kind of a weird little side thing, which is uh, uh, Steven Spielberg. When the movie came out with Harrison Ford, uh, uh, Cowboys and Aliens, right? Remember, and Spielberg's first response was, he goes, how did everyone not get that title? How did that title get through the cracks and nobody caught trademark that title? He goes, that's brilliant. <laughs> and again, years, I mean, decades and decades yeah. of filmmaking, nobody even thought about it. It's like, it's a great title it, and the movie is fine. But it's like, why, why again? Because yeah. it didn't, didn't occur to anybody. So yeah, it's every, anybody coming up. I am sure there are people out there. There's somebody who's going to come up with some sort of little trick Right. That's that, not a life hack or anything like that, but something fairly simple. I mean, we, we've been trying to make it as simple as possible. And we have come up with the best thing about Flat Earth is, which should encourage all the new people, is there are so many. There is no one perfect silver. Okay. All right. Let me throw one more out at you. The little word of wisdom. There is no perfect silver bullet for everything. 
silver bullets kill, kill werewolves. They don't do anything. It's Frankenstein. Meaning, and everyone thinks there's this one perfect, uni, you know, unified theory that's going to, you know, do the whole flat earth. It's like, no, because there's so many different, you're, because your audience is so different. Meaning um, your audience is, you know, isn't receptive to this, but some aren't. The reason why flat earth has gone as far as it has is because of the shotgun spread approach. We yeah, hit them with so many, throw so many things down range at them. Oh yeah, they may be able to fend off a few, but there are some getting through. No question. If it was just one or two things, oh no, 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 no. You could you could block. I mean, denial will block some of those on on its own. So don't look for, don't try to do an all encompassing thing. Whatever your niche is, whatever that little thing is you're trying to go after, stick with that. If you're good at it, stick with that, and see if he can if you can develop it into into something that's uniquely yours or it may again don't and also don't be offended if somebody takes your thing i mean this is is this is straight up showbiz 101 which is look you may have the greatest song in the world but if it's not played a certain way and if the instruments are not a certain way and it's not you know the stage thing isn't a certain way it's not going to resonate so if all of a sudden somebody like the clues, I was not offended in the slightest when somebody took my 15 minute thing, started stacking them up, put them in a, in a thing and, and renamed it. Flat Earth wasn't even in the title. They just threw it out there and it's like, oh, it's resonating all over the place. It's like, OK, sure. <laughs> Why not? If the message gets out there, um, I, I, I don't care where it comes from. Uh, last thing, which is because people give me crap. It's like, oh, you know, why you? Would you not, are you saying you do anything you would, you know, sell out for flat earth? I was going, no, no, but I would do anything to get the message across and let anything happen. So I wasn't kidding when I said, look, you could strap me to a chair and throw pies at my head. But if I could say flat earth on camera, I'm doing it because, <laughs> yeah. because people made fun of the commercial and they, they said, oh, you know, you know, why, why'd you let them, you know, kind of make, make fun of you? It's like, you don't even understand. I go, the whole reason that I got the commercial is because the people that own the company were flat earthers and they weren't telling anybody. Right. So they just, cause they could have, uh, I got there and I was the only one, sorry, last thing, which is I'm there and I'm looking through the casting sheet and I realized that I'm the only person there that's not an actor out of the <laughs> entire campaign. I'm the only one there without an agent. I, and, and I'm reading this. I'm going, and I'm in Australia, right? And and I'm looking at all these people because, you know, they were also made fun of Americans in two or three different segments. And I said, um, I said, uh, I'm the only American here. And, and they go, no, you're, you're the only one that even flew in to get here. And I go, <laughs> I go, why, I go, why didn't you just get somebody to pretend to be a, a flat earther, an American flat earther? It's like, it's like, oh, ask him. And it was the the company guy that came up to me and, you know, it's like, hey, glad to meet you. I didn't even get to have dinner with them. They didn't even want to be seen with me in public. Oh, outside of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, outside of that, it was like, no, no, we're we're, we're watching you and we're, we're doing the stuff. But no, we're not going to, no, we're not going to be tied to you. Shake your hand in public. Yeah. Give me a hug oh, away. <laughs> Kyrie Irving probably not going to be meeting with us anytime soon. Novak Djokovic not going to be meeting with us. Um, and then again, other celebrities, which, you know, we're not allowed to out because we can't because they, they don't want to do it. So anyway, there you go. It's a matter new, of time. New, there's, a there's, matter. A, there's a bright future for, for new people in the game. Uh, you know, if, if you stick to your guns, don't the, the, one of the biggest fit power forces in our civilization is peer pressure, extremely powerful, as you've noticed over the last two years. Uh, if you can get, if you can shield yourself against that, there is nothing you can't do. There you go. Very well, very well said. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Well, Mark, man, I appreciate you so much for literally the day of, uh, <laughs> you know, agreeing to do this. Oh, no, happy to really do it. Week, man. Good, good timing. There's snow on the ground out here. I wasn't doing anything anyway. Is it? Oh man, that's crazy. It's mm -hmm. in Florida, it's nice and hot. Yeah, you stuck. <laughs> it's, it's 35 right now and falling out there. No, uh, it, but really, it means a lot, man. And uh, I mean, this has been a, a great conversation. I mean, I knew it would be. I hope some of the questions were something different than what they, you used. It was wonderful. Thank you for those. I, they, it sounds like you put some some time and thought into them, and oh, I, appreci I appreciate it a great deal. Excellent, excellent. Uh, don't go anywhere yet. I want to talk to you real quick after I hit the end button. Okay. But, Thank you so much. This is the president of Flat Earth University, everybody, Mr. Mark Sargent. <laughs> Thank you.
Let me see how it ended. I think it's done. 